What is good everyone has me here with another Pathfinder video and it is finally here my land shapeshifter druid build hope you will enjoy it and if you have any questions then feel free to ask them in the comment section or even if you have any tips on how to improve it but uh, let's get into it shall we now keep in mind this video is more of an in-depth in-depth uh, build guide so I will be explaining my decisions I'm not just going to list what you should be choosing so hopefully this will help you understand more why the build is the way it is and uh, potentially help you in making your own character builds in the future. Additionally, I will also be listing my items uh, that I have with the character and where you can acquire them that potentially, well not potentially, that certainly helps you with, uh, with a shapeshifter druid. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, a lot of people have been using Lan mostly as his default... Uh, Zen Archer or just built him into several versions of uh, Archers. I also seen that making Lan into uh, a Cleric has been very popular, but I barely seen anyone, frankly, use Lan as a Druid. Hell, I barely see people playing Druid in Pathfinder for whatever reason, even though it is a very powerful class. But um, without further ado, uh, let's get into it, shall we? Now, Lan is... In fact, in my opinion, a very good druid. He has the stats for it, and even his starting class, people might say it's a waste, but the fact that he starts as a monk is perfect for us, uh, especially if you don't mind dipping into certain classes for additional buffs. Not only that, but just by being a mongrel, he actually gets a plus two natural armor bonus, so he is a very good frontliner on top of it. As you can see, this druid is going to be a very good frontliner with just a 70 armor class uh, outside of combat and can can reach 80 plus armor class without any problems in combat. Uh, last time I counted it, it was around 83. And additionally, you cannot get flat-footed on maximum level. Now, let's see how we get here, shall we? Um, the beginning levels for a druid are a little bit boring, not much is happening, but uh, Lan is fairly powerful, and you also get a you also get a pet as a druid, which helps you survive the early levels. Now, he starts as a monk Zen archer, which is absolutely not a waste and perfect for us. First of all, because druid is using wisdom for their uh, for their spell book, and additionally, monk is getting armor class bonus from their wisdom. Uh, that is why most people. Dip into, dip into Monk for just one level, so they get this unarmored Wisdom bonus to their armor class, and it's going to be perfect for us. Additionally, Monks also get improved Unarmed Strike as a feat, and this is also very useful for us as we will have a chance to uh, take Crane Style, Crane Wing, and Crane Repost into our build, uh, if you choose so. So that one Monk level for him is absolutely amazing. Before I went into Druid with Lan, I like to take Witch of the Whale with him, or any witch, honestly, it doesn't really matter. The Witch of the Whale does give you a small uh, advantage with its invisibility ability uh, on level 1. But the most important thing is, and why Witch is such a popular choice for any character to take just one level in, is because you can take, first of all, a familiar, which is, in this case, a lizard, which gives plus one natural armor bonus to your character, and plus, one, plus two bonus to perception, which is also always useful. Along with that, uh, we take Ice Plant as our chosen hex. <coughs> Excuse me. Ice Plant also gives you a plus two natural armor bonus to armor class. Passively, this is just given to you just for taking which that's plus three already. And along with this, in the very early chapters of the game, in chapter one, you can take a ring called the Icy Protector in the, inns, uh, in the Inn of Canabras from uh, the Cleric Merchant in the corner at the stairs, which increases your cold resistance by 10, but the most important thing is it doubles your armor class taken from Ice Plant Hacks. So just for one level in which you get plus 5 armor class bonus. This is amazing for any character, in my opinion. So... There's that. This is chapter one of the game immediately. Plus five armor class. Why wouldn't you take it? It's amazing. 
After that, it is time, this is level 2, it is time to take levels in Druid. Now, as I said, the early levels of Druid are fairly boring, but fortunately you do get a pet, and pets are powerful in Pathfinder, especially in Wrath of the Righteous, since they get their own leveling and armors and equipment. So, fortunately, they can help you. The first three levels, Druids can still be very useful, as Entangle is, a, is one of my favorite spells of the game, helps you control battles really well, and you can fight most of the really powerful creatures at the beginning, from the Plague Smilodons or the Water Elemental. It just If you have ranged characters, Entangle is so useful. Uh, it slows down. Even if it doesn't work on the enemy, it slows down the enemy because of heavy terrain. So by the time they get to your party, your archers will be able to potentially even kill them. Along with that, you get Acid Maw uh, on yourself if you choose... Um, if you choose to be more of a, a fighting shapeshifter later, but you get Magic Fang, which will be able to boost your pets and your uh, your natural attacks. It is one of the more important spells that we will need throughout the game. Uh, before we also reach our level 4 that we really need for shapeshifting, you will also get Bark Skin, Aspect of the Bear, all the buffs, the Bear's Endurance, Bull Strength, and, and Cat's Grace which will be very useful, again, um, for getting those additional stats for your characters. Lesser Restoration is also good. Of course, Sickening Entanglement is here. And Pox Postules, uh, if you're lucky with those Fortitude uh, saving throws to reduce Dexterity of the enemies. So Druids can be very good support characters at the beginning, but frankly, it gets a little bit boring. That's why I tend to take Boon Companion at the beginning as well, so at least the pet you get is really powerful. But if you want to focus on your own character instead, on land being stronger, then I recommend choosing something else of Boon Companion, because um, a druid, this druid character is really going to be feet hungry, and you need as many feats as possible uh, to become stronger. So instead of Boon Companion, you can already just skip this and go for Shake It Off or any of the later feats that I will be listing to make Lan himself stronger. But finally, once you reach, in this case then, level 5, sorry, level 6 uh, on your character, that's when you're finally going to be reaching level 4 as Druid and get your Shapeshift, which is your first Shapeshift Wild Shape Wolf. From here on out, you can pretty much stay in Shapeshift form throughout the whole game with Lan. He's going to be extremely powerful. And throughout the items you acquire, he's just going to be a really good frontliner, in my opinion, and, and just works really well. Um, with that said, this build should be absolutely monstrous for normal difficulty, and it should still work very well on core difficulty. Uh, anything above requires quite heavy min-maxing that takes away lots of fun from the game, so uh, if you choose to do that, um, you should at least know how to modify builds and what will work and what won't work, but on core this build should still absolutely function very well. Now you reach level uh, level 6 with your character and level 4, at this point on you should also have a mythic path level available. And for your first mythic path level I tend to choose Master Shapeshifter. Master Shapeshifter is amazing as it gives you plus 4 ability scores uh, to all your physical abilities. That means plus 4 strength, plus 4 dexterity, and plus 4 constitution. That's however we look at it. Uh, that's plus 2 to your armor class and plus 2 to your attack bonus as well. While you're shapeshifted, it's an incredibly good boost. And also, allow this is why you can use wild shape from the get-go and, and be very powerful. Keep in mind, if you chose Boon Companion, and you have a wolf, which is my recommended companion, then you can, uh, as a wolf, you also get trip attacks uh, as your natural attacks, and along with your companion, you can also trip the enemy, and trip as being a very good crowd control in the game uh, will help you throughout the early stages of the game, and potentially also allows you to make a build throughout which we will not be uh, going into, but as an alternative build for the shapeshifter, you can make a trip wolf lan, where he is focusing along with his pet to be an absolute monster tripping character. Uh, and it can be really fun. That is a, definitely a more aggressive uh, shapeshifter build, but I can totally recommend it 
as it as it just works really well. Now going on from here, it is pretty much smooth sailing. Um, so I will be going through the uh, the defeats and some abilities on the levels that could be useful for you. Once you reach uh, level five uh, on Druid, you will be unlocking level three spells. This is important because you're finally getting Magic Fang Greater. Keep in mind, Greater Magic Fang is the equivalent of Magic Weapon for your weapon using characters. It is going to be boosting your, your attacks and you should al always have it on your pets or, or your LAN. Additionally, Delay Poison is very good. Protection from energy also along with resist energy is going to be incredibly good in multiple areas of the game where they just spam elemental attacks on you. And I like to take Cold Lightning as well with LAN as you are going to go into Blackwater in Chapter 3, and Cold Lightning can really help you in that area to kill all those uh, uh, amplified monsters and uh, and robots or whatever those are, so that can be really useful. As you level up, I like to take Shake It Off with every single character as soon as possible. Why? Shake It Off is one of the best feats in the game, in my opinion, and one of the more useful and most useful ones, as Shake It Off gives you plus one bonus on all your saving throws for every ally around you who also has it, to a maximum of four. Why is this useful? Most people are complaining around the Vescovore Swarms, or all those different CCs that your characters get at the beginning of the game, and uh, make it really just an annoyance to fight any of those enemies. Now, if you take Shake It Off before you actually go to Leper's... Um, to the lepers area where the Vescovores are attacking your crusade, Shake It Off will make that whole area a, a cakewalk. Why? Because you get plus four on all your saving throws with all your characters against, against the Vescovores, and I believe you're going to have around six or seven, uh, plus six or seven fortitude saving throw against a DC 11 on normal difficulty uh, fortitude uh, gibber, which confuses your characters. So Shake It Off is just from the get-go until the very end of the game, one of the best feats that you can take. So definitely take it with all your characters, in my opinion, as it's, it's ne it never hurts. As you slowly level up, you will also unlock other shape, uh, shape forms. I really like the elemental forms personally, but you will get leopard and your small elementals. Keep in mind, as an elemental, you can choose which elemental you want to be. Uh, from water, air, fire, and earth. All of them have different stats and um, and bonuses. I personally like fire elemental quite a lot as you get the fire resistances and it just looks cool, but choose the one you like. They have some bonuses, but um, keep in mind that with elemental, greater magic fang will not work on you because you're not uh, using your fangs. Uh, so if you want to get those bonuses, you should stay an animal. Going on, what is the order of feats I recommend taking? Now, the way I took here is is not the right order, I would say. Uh, I definitely would change a few things on it. And namely, for a little bit more help offensively, after Shake It Off on level 7, I would probably take Outflank, just so you get that better bonus to attack enemies. And at this point, you should really be powerful, especially if you took that Witch, uh, witch um, Armor Class bonus earlier. So I definitely like to take that a little bit more. Uh, followed up by Natural Spell. Natural Spell allows you to cast spells while you are shapeshifted. <clears throat> Excuse me. While you're shapeshifted. Now, this is incredibly useful, but it's not necessary. Especially if you don't mind uh, constantly changing your shape with land to, to buff. But if you want to use spells in combat, the Natural Spell is absolutely uh, necessary. Now, after you take these two, so, so far, level one, he took combat reflex automatically, boon companion for pat, shake it off, then on seven, instead of dodge, I would take outflank, then on nine, natural spell, or if you don't need it, you can skip this. And at this point is when I would probably go into a little bit of more armor with him, because you will need it on the later chapters, especially as you reach the end of chapter three and beginning of chapter four. Then you can take dodge, crane style, thanks to the thanks to the monk levels, 
and then crane repost. With this, you're going to get plus eight uh, armor class bonus while fighting defensively for only minus one penalty on attack. It is incredibly good and it would be a waste not to use it. And as you're getting into as you're getting into Act 4 is when I would definitely recommend taking back to back as an ability. Why is that? Because if you have another character who is back to back near you, then you're going to be getting a plus two circumstance bonus to your armor class from opponents flanking you. Um, and along with this, there is an item in the game, which is the all round defense, which you get from Illusionera's arena which increases this plus two bonus from back to back by another plus two, which means it's going to be plus four. Uh, I wouldn't take it much earlier. It's useful, but this is the point where it's really worth it because it's an immediate plus four increase and not, uh, and not just plus two. And going on from here, the final levels, it gets a little bit um, interesting. As I said, the Druid is really feet starved. You just don't have enough feats to take everything. So, how do I combat this? Um, first of all, my last feat I took was Toughness, just so you get a little bit more health. I don't like to get one-shotted, so the more health you have, especially late game, the better. What I do is, uh, for the final level, I still like to take Fighter to get a bonus feat that you can choose. Uh, here I tried out if Unarmed Strike actually work in the game as a, as a bonus to your, um, to your Shapeshift form. It does not. So you can take a plus one, uh, plus one feat from the fighter, uh, and you can uh, choose whatever you like. Really, uh, that helps you especially with your attack, um, with your attack capabilities. But at this point, I was already starved uh, out for feats. So what did I do? For that, we have to go to our mythic paths. Now, what I like to do is, uh, a lot of people might not like. What uh, what I tend to do here is, for my mythic feats, um, I like to actually take normal feats for, for characters that just don't get enough to be very powerful. Now first we took Master Shapeshifter. A letting Strike is a very good bonus as you get uh, incredible divine damage according to your mythic rank on enemies that you manage to hit. And divine damage is usually not, it's irresistible, it's fixed damage. It's incredibly powerful, so I would always recommend taking this on melee characters. Archmage armor is also a must. That's just how you become tanky without armor, and it's incredibly powerful. Now, Mythic Dodge, I took it, but I actually don't recommend it. Why? Because it's just plus one to your AC, and that plus one is really not going to make a difference while you actually waste the Mythic feat. Um, so instead here, what would I recommend? What I like to take is, in fact, uh, for, for Lan here, is I wouldn't take any mythic feat, but instead I would choose this mythic point to take an additional mythic, uh, to take an additional normal feat. Like you see here, I took a weapon class, uh, a weapon focus for claws. Um, in fact, I think it was this. It's just bugged in the game how it shows, uh, how it shows. But yet yeah, this was an extra feat I chose here. And I took Weapon Focus Claws. And then on 8, I took Weapon Focus Claws Mythic. And on level 10, I took Crane Wing with him. But um, again, keep in mind the order is uh, the order is not perfect, what, I, what I've chosen here. Um, uh, with my character. Um, but either way, my point is that uh, if you don't have... Feats, if you don't have enough feats to take, uh, it is completely fine to take your special mythic feats to take more feats for your character because uh, there are lots of feats that's just not going to help you really. And taking these can really help your character get that plus one weapon focus, the plus two attack bonus really on your character, get crane wing, uh, crane wing for the plus uh, four dodge bonus, especially instead of dodge mythic, right? Like you can take crane wing, which is plus four or plus one dodge mythic, right? It's not very great. Now, when it comes to mythic spells and abilities, you sadly don't have this choice. So what are the ones I recommend? Master Shapeshifter is no brainer. Archmage Armor is a no brainer. Last End is optional, 
I honestly don't like Last End, even though it's probably the most broken and OP spell in the whole game. It's really a waste, because if you manage to play the game without needing Last End, then, then it's a waste. You could just take anything else here, so this is mostly for safety. Enduring spells can be very good if you want your buffs to last longer, but actually as a druid, I would instead choose uh, the one that gives you more spells. I forget its name right now. And of course, Brutally Incarnate is amazing. I would recommend this later into the game when it really matters, when enemies really get those resistances. As Brutality Incarnate is going to let your natural attacks, so all your shapeshifting attacks, to ignore damage reduction. And this is incredibly useful as well if you want him to do more damage later on. But that's pretty much the gist of it. The thing about the Druid is that you don't really have to make a lot of choices as everything just gives itself. And uh, you can choose whether you want to be a little bit more aggressive or, uh, or a defensive character. Uh, this build specifically goes for him into being defensive. Don't worry if you thought my feet order is a little bit messed up. In the description or in the comments, I will actually have it written down where you can see my most recommended order of taking these feats. This is really just trying to explain to you what feats really work on him. Now let's go into spells because I I didn't talk about those yet. Uh, on level 5, a Spect of a Wolf is very, very good. Why? If you decided to do what I said, which is going into a more aggressive shapeshifter with wolf form, with, uh, with Lan, then you can take the aspect of the wolf, which will give you enhancement bonus to strength and dexterity, but more importantly, plus two enhancement bonus to your trip attacks, along with you can make a trip attack as a swift action. This means every round you will be able to trip, try to trip the enemy, and even get bonuses on it. Now, if you decided to go with this, uh, with this path, it's going to be much harder to choose what feats to go for. I would probably recommend to just not take then uh, Crane Style and, uh, and Crane Repost. Or actually, you can take Crane Style. Well, if you're going aggressive, I would just skip on all the monk feats. And in instead, what would be very useful for you to take is Trip, Greater Trip, and Fury's... Um, uh, b -b 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 the Fury's Trip ability. Uh, as uh, those will increase your combat maneuver bonus. Fury's Fall, sorry, that's the name. Uh, that's going to give you massive uh, combat maneuver bonuses, and then you can have you can be a really good trip character. So that is what Aspect of the Wolf is about. Along with that, of course, Animal Growth is very useful. But going on level six, you will get Stone Skin Communal, all the mass uh, ability boosts. This is very good again because. Why? I've been told that why would you use these boosts on your characters? You have your circlets and your belts. Well, that is exactly why. Because you don't want to use those circlets and belts. You should be using belts and, and helmets that give you bonuses that otherwise you cannot get in the game. So you can get all these bonuses on your characters, plus four enhancement bonuses to your stats. And then you can have very good helmets and belts additionally that will boost your character. So those are incredibly good. If you were a caster, then of course you get Sirocco in this level as well. But for us, it's mostly the defensive abilities and boosts that, that are very good in, on this level. Uh, going on level 7. Now level 7 is one of the more important levels as well, as you will get legendary proportions. Legendary proportions will increase your size, additionally giving you uh, more bonuses to your score. Like plus 6 instead of uh, the plus 4 from the previous boost that I just mentioned, and you're going to get size bonus, which is going to be very useful for your attack. As I said, this character doesn't have enough feats to 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 be a good uh, or the best melee it can possibly be, so you need to take as many bonuses as possible to be able to especially hit, depending on if you're being uh, offensive or defensive. You cannot be both, because you will not have enough points, but with... Uh, but with uh, legendary proportions, your size will increase. You will get lots of lots of uh, strength as well, and it will boost your attack bonus so that you can uh, hit enemies at least. Keep in mind that in late game there will be enemies who will not be able to hit. You will have to use uh, supporting characters or characters that are focused around attacking or even spellcasters to kill them. 
And of course, level nine uh, is okay, sorry, I did skip um, uh, level level eight. Sorry, very important. You will get true seeing, which will allow you to bypass all the uh, stealth of the enemies. You will get animal shapes, which you will probably not use. Honestly, it it changes your party into animals. But most importantly, you will get Frightful Aspect and Sea Mantle. These two abilities are insanely powerful. First of all, Sea Mantle is a plus 8 armor class bonus to your character straight. So if I am 70 now, with Sea Mantle on, it's going to be immediately 78. That's one of the greater boosts in the game. This is against, um, this is against characters that do not have freedom of movement. Sea Mantle is, is huge. It's one of the best defensive spells in the whole game. Frightful Aspect is another insanely powerful spell. Now keep in mind, yes, Frightening Aspect doesn't seem that great. It just makes your character bigger. It gives you the bonuses. Yes. All right. Some damage resistance. It, it is good. But why is it really powerful? Frightening Aspect is going to immediately make any creature frightened or shaken around you if they are not immune to it. Um, basically, this doesn't even require a check. So, just if enemies are near you while you have fright Frightful Aspect, those enemies will be affected by, by fear. And why is that good? Because there is an ability in the game that comes from Dazzling Display Feet Line. Uh, you have to take Dazzling Display... And it is called... Uh, I always mix it up together with Sunder Armor. Uh, Shatter Defenses. Shatter Defenses, what it does is, if you're a melee character and the enemy is under the effects of Shaken or Frightened, then you ignore all their armor class and you attack them as if they were flat-footed. So if your Druid tank has Frightful Aspect, any enemy and 80% of the enemies, including the Scari in the game, can be shaken. They're gonna be shaken and they're all gonna be flat footed, and you can absolutely destroy them with your party. So, Frightful Aspect, incredibly good, but I won't go deeper into that. Um, and level 9 with your Druid. Level 9 is just where it becomes super fun. You get multiple really great abilities. Foresight is very good as it gives you plus two inside bonus to your armor class and you can never become flat-footed. This is your ultimate tanking ability that's going to uh, be on top of your cake with your druid tanking. It's going to make you really powerful along with you're getting shape change and you will be able to take elemental body four, level four beast. And not only that, but you can finally take dragon as your as your form as well. It is the final shape-shifting level that you want with your character. And it's just uh, it's just beautiful. But um, unfortunately, you will have to choose what you want to take because you will not have a lot of spell slots at this point. Still, Foresight is probably the best thing you can take. Or if you're really into the shape-shifting fantasy, then you can take that shape change. And that is pretty much it when it, when we, when it comes to our spells and feats. Uh, now let's go into why Shapeshifter is such a cool choice in the game. That is because Alcad actually wants you to try out Shapeshifter. There are multiple items that, that just boost your build and uh, your potential as a Shapeshifting Druid. So let's get into it why. First of all, you there is a helmet in the game called the Shapeshifter's Helm. Which gives you plus two bonus to armor class while in Wild Shape and also one additional use of Wild Shape per day. Unfortunately, the additional use is not going to be useful because with the Mythic Shapeshifter Master, you already have infinite uh, amount of uh, shapeshifting, but you get a plus two bonus to your armor class immediately. This helmet is attainable uh, by uh, destroying the Druid Ghost in Winter Sun through the Miyamir questline uh, from one of the orders who will ask you to find this uh, lost priest uh, in your crusade. We already mentioned all-round defense, which you acquire from Elushinira in uh, in the arena, which gives you plus two bonus to your back-to-back -back feet. We also already mentioned Icy Protector, which doubles your Ice Plant hacks. This is acquired in the inn in Act One from one of the merchants. 
We have Braces of Animal Fury, which is useful, especially at the beginning of the game. This can be acquired in Dresden from one of the merchants. It gives you plus three bonus in attack and damage rolls whenever you are you are polymorphed. This becomes very useful at the beginning as you don't have a greater magic fang as high level to get the plus three enhancement, so it can help quite a bit. You have half of a pair, which gives you plus two circumstance bonus on attack rolls and AC. If there is someone else who has the other half of this pair, this can be acquired from the cleric in Dresden, who is in front of the church, and the other half is going to be acquired from the dragon that you hunt through Greybor's questline. So this is again another plus two to your attack and AC as well, if you have another character who is wearing it. Then additionally, you get Lizard Tail, which is available in the uh, Thousand Delights uh, brothel in Alushinira. This belt gives you plus three morale bonus to armor class and reflex saving throws. Additionally, you will get a plus eight circumstance bonus to armor class in the first round of every combat. Incredibly good, incredibly good belt uh, that you get in Act 4. And you get the Claws of Sacred Beast. Unfortunately, I don't remember where I got this, so if anyone knows, feel free to post it in the, in the comment section. But I think uh, this is also something you're going to bump into the game fairly easily. Uh, these gloves, uh, if attacking an enemy of evil alignment, which is almost all your enemies, then your unarmed attacks will do 2d6 damage, uh, which I don't think we're gonna get, because we're already shapeshifted, but most importantly, it does give you a plus 1 enhancement bonus on attacks and damage rolls with the claws, and this does stack with your magic fangs. So there you go, those are all the items that I have found, at least, that help you uh, with the Shapeshifter Druid. So let us go through on our armor class on what exactly and how does this character look like after all of this. You have your base 10 armor class, plus 2 from level 20, for, uh, Foresight, uh, Final Spell, plus 3 from Morale. Again, um, the other bonuses which I believe are are coming from... This is the ice. Uh, let's get back into this so I can actually remember what those will be uh, once we eliminate it. You get the dexterity bonus. You would get plus 5 shield of faith at maximum level, plus 14 from mage armor and archmage armor, plus 5 from the witch, lizard, um, ice plant, ice plant ring, plus 2 from mongrel, bark skin, dodge, Mythic Dodge if you took it. Legendary Proportions and Frightful Spec gives you plus 6. Then, all that counted, the other plus 2 must be the Helmet. And the plus 6, now that is actually a good question. Uh, the plus 3 morale bonus comes from the belt. Uh, the plus 6 is... Oh, yes, of course, sorry. And the plus 6 is coming from your Wisdom which is your monk armor class that you get by default. Now, this is 70 out of combat. Additionally, what will you get? You will get plus two circumstance with half of pair, which is going to be 72. If you have sea mantle, that's plus eight. So you already have eight. If you're defensive fighting, that's already 84. If you have crane wing, that's already 88. Uh, if you have back to back, that's already 90. And another plus two for the ring, which is 92. Additionally, if you somehow went even more aggressive on defense, you could have taken combat expertise as a feat, which is plus five, which would put your armor class at 97 even, which is just absolutely monstrous. And you don't need that, but that is the potential of of Shapeshifter land, which is an absolutely super and, and fun build. I can't recommend it enough. So if you never tried out a Shapeshifter Druid, please do so. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it in the comment section. Again, if the, uh, the feet section of the video was a little bit uh, jumbled, then in the comment section, I will be posting the order that I would recommend taking everything. Hope this was helpful. Hope this is going to encourage more people into trying out Druid. 
enjoyed everyone. Thanks for being here and look forward to some more build videos. Thanks for being here and I'll see you guys next time.